Just a bit, quick bit of housekeeping before we go on. For reasons that are only known to the higher powers of YouTube in their infinite and infallible wisdom, uh, the user Grandall50 has had his account suspended uh, with no warning or anything. And this is, it's just utterly bizarre. There is nothing even remotely offensive on Grandall's channel, not unless you're offended by toy reviews. And knowing some people on the YouTube community, that, that's quite possible. There are people out there who seem to be offended by the act of breathing. But it's utterly insane. Anyway, he set up a new channel, uh, Death Knell, something or other. There's a number after it, I can't quite remember what it is. Anyway, I will link to the new channel on here. So anyone who was subscribed to Grandall beforehand, and anyone who likes their Transformers reviews and their toy reviews and whatnot, check him out if you would. Also a man with very, 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 very fine taste in literature and uh, movies and just media in general. But please, go check him out. Hey there YouTube! This is going to be my review of Sam Raimi's latest horror film, Drag Me to Hell. Now a lot of critics have been saying that with this movie, Sam Raimi has gone back to his roots. and. That's certainly true to a certain degree. There are, there's definitely more than a hint of the Evil Dead about this movie. But what I would say is don't go to it expecting to have quite the same experience as the Evil Dead. The Evil Dead has a certain layer that has been stripped away with Drag Me to Hell. And that is the slow building tension and the sense of dread that is built up throughout the early stages of the Evil Dead. There is no slow build to this film whatsoever. It starts right away, in your face horror, and it doesn't let up throughout. I usually prefer movies, particularly horror films, that have a slow build towards the eventual payoff. But this one works, principally because of how well executed the actual scares are. Most of the horror actually comes in the form of very well-timed shocks and jumps. That work principally because Sam Raimi, with his knowledge of how... His innate knowledge, it seems, of how to film horror, makes it so the timing of each jump and shock is subtly off. It's subtly skewed so that it comes at you when you don't expect it. And it's quite brilliant. It's one of the very few horror films in recent years that has actually made me jump. It's also one of the very few films in recent years that I have laughed all the way through. There is, seems to be a phenomenon at the moment with uh, summer blockbuster movies in particular. They all seem to be massively overlong. Even some of the more fantastic ones, such as The Dark Knight. There are certain story arcs within The Dark Knight that were redundant, really. You didn't necessarily need them in order to get the point of the movie. Um, similarly, Pirates of the Caribbean, all of those films, in fact. The uh, Transformers, Star Trek. They could have all had a good hour sheared out of them. And there were certainly points where I was thinking to myself, come on, come on, get on with it. That certainly wasn't the case with Drag Me to Hell. I found myself entertained by every single second of the film. Simply because the sense of tension and of impending hilarity, horror and hilarity is so intense. And it's sustained. That's the, the interesting thing about the movie. The sense is uh, sustained throughout, right to the very end. It's funny because I was having a conversation with Rowan Fortune Wood in one of the comments sections of my videos. I think it was um, my I like tag about the um, the relationship between humour and horror. And this movie, this movie not so much straddles it as does the can can on it. Sam Raimi takes incredible delight, a, 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 de a demonic delight even, in making you laugh at things you know you really shouldn't laugh at. It makes you laugh at the suffering of the characters, at the, the terrible situations that they find themselves in, at the grotesquery of the pain that they are put through. And this is a gross movie, by the way. This is a, a schlocky horror film, very much like The Evil Dead. And if you have a weak stomach, then I'd suggest that you just don't go and see it, because it will make you vomit. But it's it's 
so utterly brilliant. The grossness and the disgusting elements are so lavish and opulent that you, you can't help just laugh, but to just laugh at them. Now as for story, the story itself is brilliant, you can see, because it's so simple and so utterly hilarious. It's about um, a young woman who works at a bank as a loan officer, and she's not a terrible person by any stretch of the imagination. What she is put through throughout the course of this movie is in no should in no way be regarded as a sort of moral lesson or fable because the punishment is utterly disproportionate to the crime and although she is incredibly ambitious this young woman she's also very kind and she's finding herself being superseded by some of the more cutthroat employees and she desperately wants a promotion um, but her boss isn't sure that she can make the hard decisions and so when um, a fabulous, fabulously played old gypsy woman named Mrs. Ganush comes to her begging for a, um, an extension on her mortgage, she refuses it. Not in an unkind way. I mean, she, she makes it very plain that she's done everything she can. She even tries. She just tried to convince her boss to extend the woman's mortgage but it just doesn't happen and uh, this old gypsy woman ends up cursing her sicking a demonic entity called the Lamia on her now anyone who knows their Greek mythology will know that Lamia are not demons as such they're actually um, vampiric creatures that feed on the blood and flesh of uh, children but in this movie, it's a demon. It's it's actually a goat-headed, satanic demon. And the Lamia sets about making her life utterly miserable in every conceivable way that it can. And things start off small, little, not so much annoyances as such. But comparatively minor disturbances that very quickly escalate into all-out supernatural carnage. One of the things I love about the movie more than anything, it is it is without a doubt, it is the finest horror film I've seen at the cinema since uh, The Descent by Neil Marshall. It doesn't necessarily stand on the same level because it's not a film of ideas. It's no, there's nothing terribly serious. It's it's uh, the horror movie equivalent of an EC comic. It's very funny. All of the horror is very visual. And it has nothing to say. It's not a film with a message or anything to that effect. It's just incredible, incredible fun. Which is what Sam Raimi seems to do best. He's not necessarily a director of ideas. He's not a, a David Cronenberg or, or a David Lynch or anything to that effect. Even so, it is a remarkably conceived and executed piece of work. It, it's very precise, it knows exactly what it wants to do, and it does it beautifully. And it, it's worth seeing just because it is so entertaining. It's not The Evil Dead. Don't go to it expecting anything as horrific, anything as atmospheric as The Evil Dead. You won't get it. But what you will get is a monstrously fun popcorn horror movie that will keep you entertained to the very last frame. And that is a rarity these days.